What do you see? Uh, no, wait. Stand closer. The uh, Ken. Ken. You gotta get close. Let it pulsate. Let it work on you. Closer. No, too close. There. Let it spread out. Let it wrap its arms around you. Let it embrace you, filling even your peripheral vision so nothing else exists or has ever existed or will ever exist. Let the picture do its work, but work with it. Meet it halfway, for God's sake. Lean forward. Lean into it. Engage with it. Now, what do you see? Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> A little less light. So, now, what do you see? Be specific. No, no. Be exact. Be exact, but sensitive. You understand? <laughs> Be kind. Be a human being. That's all I can say. Be a human being for once in your life. These pictures deserve compassion, and they live or die in the eye of the sensitive viewer. They quicken only if the empathetic viewer will let them. That is what they cry out for. That is why they were created. That is what they deserve. Now, Ken, what do you see? Red. But do you like it? Mm. Speak up. Yes, 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 of course you like it. How can you not like it? Everyone likes everything nowadays. They like the television and the phonograph and the soda pop and the shampoo and the Cracker Jack. Everything becomes everything else. It's all nice and pretty and likable. Everything's fun in the sun. Huh? Where's the discernment? Where's the arbitration that separates what I like from what I respect, what I deem worthy, what has, listen to me now, significance? Let's have the lights back on and get rid of them. Maybe this is a dinosaur talking. Hmm? Maybe I'm a dinosaur sucking up the oxygen from all you cunning little mammals hiding in the bushes waiting to take over. <laughs> Maybe I'm speaking a lost language unknown to your generation. But a generation that does not aspire to seriousness, to meaning, is unworthy to walk in the shadow of those who have gone before. I mean those who have struggled and surmounted. I mean those who have aspired. I mean Rembrandt. I mean Turner. I mean Michelangelo and Matisse. I mean, obviously, Rothko. <laughs> do you aspire? Yes. To what? To what do you aspire? I want to be a painter, so I guess I aspire to painting. Then those clothes won't do. Uh, now, we work here. Hang up your jacket outside. And I, I appreciate you put on your Sunday clothes to impress me. It's poignant, really. It touches me, but it's ridiculous. We work hard here. This isn't a goddamn old world salon with tea cakes and lemonade. Hang up your jacket outside. Yes. Now, Sydney told you what I need here? Yes. We start every morning at 9 and we work until 5, just like bankers. You'll help me stretch the canvases and mix the paints and clean the brushes and build the stretchers and move the paintings. Also help apply ground color, which is not painting. So any lunatic assumptions you make in that direction, you need to banish immediately. <laughs> You, you'll pick up food, cigarettes, anything else I want, any whim, no matter how demanding or demeaning. If you don't like that, you can leave right now. Answer me, yes or no? Yes. Consider, I'm not your rabbi. I'm not your father. I'm not your shrink. I am not your friend. I'm not your teacher. I am your employer. You understand? Yes. As my assistant, you're going to see many things here, many ingenious things, but they're all secret. You cannot talk about any of this. Don't think I don't have enemies, because I do. And I don't just mean those other painters and gallery owners and museum curators and goddamn son of a bitch art critics. Not to mention that vast panoply of disgruntled viewers who loathe me and my work because they do not have the heart, nor the patience, nor the capacity to think, to understand, because they're not even human beings like we talked about. You remember? Yes. I'm painting a series of murals now. These ones here. I'll probably do 30 or 40, then choose which work best in concert, like a fugue. Mm. You'll help me put on the undercoat, then I'll paint them, then I'll look at them, then I'll, I'll paint some more. I do a lot of layers, one after another, like a glaze, slowly building the image like Pentimento, letting the luminescence emerge until it's done. How do you know when it's done? There's tragedy in every brushstroke. Ah. Swell, let's have a drink. Uh here 
Answer me a question. Don't think about it. Just say the first thing that comes into your head. No cognition. Okay. You ready? Yeah. Who's your favorite painter? Jackson Pollock. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, no. Let me do it again. No, no, no. Sorry. Come on. No, no, forget it. Come on, ask me again. Who's your favorite painter? Picasso. <laughs> <laughs> Pollock. No, that's always Pollock. Don't get me wrong. He was a great painter. We came up together. I knew him very well. What was he like? You read Nietzsche? What? You ever read Nietzsche, Birth of Tragedy? No. You call yourself an artist? One cannot discuss Pollock without it. One cannot discuss anything without it. What do they teach you in art school now? I... You read Freud? No. Jung? Well... Byron? I... Wordsworth? Aeschylus? Turgenev? <laughs> Sophocles? Schopenhauer? Shakespeare? Hamlet? Oh, please, God, at least Hamlet. <laughs> Quote me Hamlet right now. To be or not to be, that is the question. Is that the question? I don't know. You got a lot to learn, young man. <laughs> Philosophy, theology, literature, poetry, drama, history, archaeology, anthropology, mythology, music. Come on. Come on. These are your tools as much as brush and pigment. You cannot be an artist until you are civilized. You cannot be civilized until you learn. To be civilized is to know where you belong in the continuum of your art and your world. To surmount the past, you must know the past. I thought you weren't my teacher. Mm, you should be so blessed I talk to you about art. How do you feel? How do I feel? How do they make you feel, the paintings? Give me a second. So? Give me a second. <sighs> Disquieted. And? Thoughtful. And? Um, sad. Tragic. Yeah. They're for a restaurant. What? <laughs> They're for a restaurant. <laughs> so, I'm minding my own business when Mr. Philip Johnson calls me. You know Mr. Philip Johnson, the world-renowned architect? Well, not personally. No, of course you don't know him personally. You don't know anyone personally. Don't interrupt me. <laughs> Mr. Philip Johnson. He's designing the new Seagram building on Park Avenue. He and Mies van der Rohe. Oh, oh these are names with which to conjure. Are they not? <laughs> Philip Johnson, Mies van der Rohe, <laughs> titans of their field, revolutionists. Together they are making a building unlike anything the world has yet seen. Reflecting the golden ambitions of not only this city and its inhabitants, but of all mankind. In this building, there is to be a restaurant called the Four Seasons. Like the Vivaldi. Mm. And on the walls of this restaurant, $35,000 they're paying me. No other painter comes close. My first murals. Imagine a frieze all around the room, a continuous narrative filling the walls, one to another, each painting a new chapter, the story unfolding. You look and they are there, inescapable and inexorable, like doom. Are these ones done? They're in process. I have to study them now. Study them? Most of painting is thinking. Did anybody teach you that? 10% is putting paint onto canvas. The rest, the rest is waiting. All my life, I've wanted just this, my friend, to create a place, a place where the viewer could live in contemplation with the work and give it some of the same attention and care that I gave it. Like a chapel, a place of communion. But it's a restaurant. No. I will make it a temple. <laughs>